Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. So today's vlog is to go through my dressmaker's ball dress with you. Um, the ball is actually taking place this evening so I'm really really excited and um, it's just literally hours away now. I cannot wait to see all the other sewers and all their finery and what they've made. Um, a few little snippets has, have been coming up on Instagram over the last couple of days uh, so it's been really interesting to see all the different types of dresses that people have been making. Um, so I'm really excited to see those in the flesh and to meet all the other sewers as well. So, yeah, I'm going to really look forward to this evening, a child-free evening on my own. I just cannot wait. Um, so I wanted to go through the construction of the garment that I've made um, and how I got on with sewing it. Now, I'm not going to try the dress on for this particular vlog. I will insert some photos and video footage instead. I think you'll get a better view of it that way. Um, just because there's not really enough room here for me to stand back for you to see but you can see I've got it on the mannequin here in the background um, and I'm really pleased with how the dress has turned out and I'm going to be wearing it with that that cardigan which I picked up from a, my local charity shop so originally it was from Monsoon so it's like a fluffy sort of cardigan so I'm going to have to take one of those lint rollers with me because it does the fluff does kind of come off on your dress a little bit um, yeah, so I remind myself of Snow White actually wearing that. And I'm just going to wear it with my clear necklace that you might have seen in a previous vlog that my mum bought me from Marks and Spencers. Um, and then the shoes I'm going to be wearing are these sort of strappy shoes which have got diamantes on them. And I've had these for years, but when it's night time and the lights are shining on them, they look really pretty. Um, so I haven't actually had to buy any accessories to go with the dress. Um, so I think the dress in all cost me probably about £40 to make. Um, added up all the fabric and notions and that kind of thing and then my neighbour she's actually kindly um, loaned me some earrings these stud glass balls which are just the right colour uh, for the dress so I'm going to wear those and she's kindly lent me her clutch bag as well because I didn't have a bag that went with my outfit and I was considering going into um, town and buying one but I just really didn't have time to be honest so really pleased that she's she's kindly lent me those um, so just to remind you then, the pattern is McCall's M6953 and I've done this version here but without that contrast band. Now to keep the length of the dress, what I had to do was I cut out all the pattern pieces, was for the contrast band pattern piece. I had to cut that out as well and then overlap it um, by 5 eighths of an inch around the bottom of the skirt where you've cut the skirt for that particular dress just so um, that you get the length, but obviously there would have been a seam allowance there when, those, uh, when that contrast band was put on. So that's what I did. Um, and then uh, for the actual construction of the skirt, um, I actually made, so I cut out lining and um, the outer fabric, and I bought three metres of each. And in hindsight, I should have bought three and a half metres because I only had just sort of just enough really to get all the pattern pieces on. Luckily, because it's a plain fabric, I was able to rotate and turn the pieces, pattern pieces around to fit them on the fabric. Thank goodness. Because um, I didn't, the only thing was, if there was anything to go wrong with the dress, I didn't have any fabric to fall back on. So that was just a little bit worrying. So I cut out, yeah, exactly the same for the lining and for the outer, for both the dress. And then... Um, for when I attached the skirt, um, I basically stitched all around the hemline, right sides together, and then understitched it. Um, so then I had like two skirt pieces, so they were joined, and then I had the two skirt pieces, which then I brought right sides together, and then I was going to use it as one piece, one you know, treat the skirt as one piece. But then, to be honest, um, at that point, I, my head was in a bit of a spin, and I just couldn't fathom out how I was going to get keep the zip sort of concealed inside as well as well as the outside because I didn't want I wanted the inside to look sort of as pretty as it did on the outside and I, I thought now what I need to do is to have the lining of the skirt attached to the bodice lining and the outer skirt attached to the outer bodice um, but then because I'd already stitched along the hem I just couldn't work out how I would then sort of turn it inside out and, you know, do some kind of jiggery-pokery to get it sitting right. So that wasn't going to work, so I had to scrap that idea. And then, in the end, I um, 
ended up treating the skirt as one piece. But because the, the satin fabric was a lot heavier than I anticipated it to be, um, when I firstly attached it to the outer bodice, um, I found that the satin was actually billowing at the bottom of the dress. Um, and I just wasn't happy with that. So in the end, I un unpicked that and took it off the bodice. And then I had to sort of pull the lining up above the skirt. And then I stitched, I think, three eighths of an inch around the waistline um, and then cut off that excess just so it pulled the satin sort of up a little bit so it wasn't billowing at all. And I think what I should have done is um, line the dress as you would normally line a fully lined dress and that's have the skirt attached to the bodice lining and the outer attached to the outer bodice um, and then stitched the hemline afterwards but I would have had to have obviously done that by hand and it is quite a big hem so it's quite a big job to do um, but anyway I got round it uh, so what I ended up actually doing once I attached the skirt to the bodice was keeping the lining free, free flowing for the bodice um, as you would normally and then for the skirt portion I unpicked a section either side of where the zip was going to be inserted just so I had, a, it, had it sort of flapping. I mean this is really really hard to kind of describe to you so I hope you're getting the gist of how I did this um, because then when I put the zip in I obviously attached it to the outer uh, skirt and bodice section and then as you would normally hand sew your lining down the back of the zip so it conceals it I did that for the inner skirt as well and because I also had stitched around that hemline and under stitched it and everything I'd also sewn up the back seam up to the point where the bottom of the zip was going to be so I had to kind of use the lining uh, to st hand stitch it like I did with the bodice lining so I hope this is making sense um, because I got round it and you'll see on the pictures that I'll insert that um, yeah it, it all came together in the end and it's all concealed on the inside as well as the outside but I did have a really big learning curve with that um, and I didn't follow 100% the instructions on how to construct this dress from this particular pattern company. Now it's the first time actually that I've made any item of clothing from one of the bigger companies. I've all, always used the um, indie patterns. So for the bodice and the bodice lining I just followed the instructions as per this particular pattern and I did as well for the skirt but then when you attach the outer to the inner bodice yeah, um, I didn't follow the instructions at all. So what I then did was I went on to the By Hand London website and followed the Kim dress sew along um, and they break it down into sections so you can click on when it's time to sort of line the bodice and I followed their instructions and that was really, really clear. They've got some beautiful photos on there so everything's step by step and I would definitely recommend um, using their website actually because they've got sew alongs for all their dresses I think on there. And I think when I did the My Handmade Wardrobe party, Ready to Party dress, I followed the instructions on there as well how to line the bodice of that particular dress because at the point, at the time, I was um, just following written instructions. So that really helped. And then I think there was one section in this uh, pattern, um, yeah, where you've lined, when you actually attach the, the bodice, outer bodice to the inner bodice lining, um, it was just the way that they constructed it. It was just really bizarre. And you had to kind of attach the shoulders in a weird way. So I'm really glad I didn't follow that because it just seemed a real sort of long-winded way to go around it. And I think when you follow the Kim dress so long for lining a bodice, it's a little bit like that burrito method where you end up pulling um, it through one of the shoulders. So it's just like a little sort of bit, bit of fabric magic and it just all comes together. I mean, a lot of you, if you are experienced sewers, will have already done this, um, but I definitely recommend checking out that tutorial or website uh, for doing that. So I did kind of get to a point in the instructions on this particular pattern and then I just put them to one side and didn't use them. So there was a lot of, um, yeah, learning process in this dress. So like I say, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. 
Um, I know for next time, if I ever make this dress again or something similar, if I'm going to line the skirt fully like this, then I'll use a lighter weight lining, something the same sort of weight as the outer dress, just because I did have that little bit of an issue of that pooling, um, which have, I have um, overcome it. Um, it's not 100% perfect by any means, but to be honest, I'm happy with how it's falling. Um, and I managed to get the zip in to be pretty much in, invisible down the back as well, so that worked out really well. Um, and I hand sewed all the insides of the lining and around the skirt as well, so that is really neat. So if you had a reversible zip, you could actually make this dress reversible, so that is um, something I'm considering maybe for a future dress. Um, yeah, I really like that idea. So um, I'll insert, like I say, some clips of me wearing it um, and a photo and just a sort of so you can get a closer look at the dress itself. I don't want to put it on today because, like I say, I can't really get it in the frame here on my, cap or my phone. Um, and also now it's all on the mannequin. I don't want to touch it until tonight, <laughs> just in case anything happens to it. I just want it to be in pristine condition, ready for tonight's ball. So, yes, um, I think also oh, I just wanted to say when I was cutting out the... Um, lining fabric it was quite slippery being a satin and I bought some of these clips um, and that really helped where I just clipped the salvage all together um, and that stopped it kind of moving around because I didn't use pattern weights and a rotary cutter because my rotary cutter was quite blunt so I did use my um, dressmaking shears and I just pinned it and it didn't make any holes in the satin so that was good but these these clips really did come in handy and I found they came in really handy as well when I just um, basted the zip in to hold the zip in place rather than using pins I could just quickly pull these off so they really worked and you can get these from most haberdashery shops they're not very expensive and I've just got two packets of those so yes I think um, that's really all I wanted to say then uh, that I hope you really like my dress um, and if you haven't seen my photos on Instagram, I'll, I'll pop a few on here. Uh, but I have put more details ones on my Instagram account. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me to get me out there in the uh, YouTube sort of sewing community a little bit more. Um, hello to all my new subscribers who have recently subscribed as well. Really nice to have you here with me. Um, really appreciate all the lovely comments and um and, and things that you put forward to me. I love reading them and I do try and answer everybody as much as I can. Um, so when I do get to a thousand subscribers, I am gonna do some kind of giveaway. So at the minute, I think I'm still about 500 odd subscribers, which is amazing. I never thought that I'd get to that point um, because my subscribers have sort of been a steady incline ever since I started doing these vlogs because I think I started in September last year. So yeah, it's been a steady incline. A lot of people get subscribers a lot quicker than I do, but um, yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you ever so much for watching as usual and I shall see you soon. Thanks a lot, bye. Okay, so I'll just give you a closer view of the dress. Uh, so the outer fabric then is a faux silk dupion and it's got princess seams on both sides. There aren't any darts at all. And then at the front you have um, some pleats here which form a big box pleat and that goes straight down to the high-low hem. Uh, and you get there a sneak preview of the um, the lining fabric, but it is coming across quite blue and it is much greener than that. It's more of a peacock kind of green colour. Um, and then I'll just take you back up and then I'll turn the mannequin around so you can see the back. That is a bra there, by the way, but you don't see my bra when I'm wearing it. I think the mannequin must be a slightly different shape to me, obviously. Um, Invisible zip, been inserted fairly well. Um, I have got a bit of a height issue here. Not really sure what happened there, but I'm not too fussed as my um, hair will cover that. And I have got a hook and eye just at the back of that as well. Um, so that goes down to about here. Um, another box pleat at the back with these pleats. And I've met the princess scenes up with those really accurately. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out. And then this is the length of the dress, so it goes right down to the floor. So when I've got my heels on, it's um, off the floor. But yes, really pleased with how this dress has turned out. I've never made anything like this before, so yeah, overall very, very happy with it. Just turn her back round. There we go. Yeah, really pleased. So she's ready for some dancing. <laughs>